Hey y'all, this is Megan with the Zen Succulent. I am so excited today to talk about different trellis structures that you can use indoors for your nice viney plants. So I happen to be just on a regular trip walking through the aisles of Target, Target, uh, looking for some toiletries and I found this lovely plant trellis stakes. Um, this is a part of their Hearth in Hand with Magnolia um, for their upcoming spring and I just had to have it. Look at these gorgeous shapes and these colors and of course what sold me was that lovely picture up top of the lovely um it looks like a philodendron just cascading around and I thought oh, I can use this for a new pothos that I just received. Um, so follow along as we do that planting up and make sure also to like and subscribe this newly growing channel that I have here. So the plant that I'm going to be trellising up today is an Agapathium memorium. Um, it is also known as Devil's Ivy. When it comes to the care for it, make sure to put in bright indirect light. Um, it can even tolerate medium to low light. Just make sure that you want to give it in a place that gets some sort of light. Um, also when it comes to the watering habits, you want to keep the soil slightly moist, but allow it to dry out in between watering um, and you should all be set. I love these gorgeous, almost camouflage leaves that we have here. It's such a spectacular plant. So something extremely awesome about this was how sturdy these are they have a lovely brass finish and three unique shapes i think today for this plant i might honestly be going with this nice big oval shape i think that would be gorgeous in the perfect spot and it goes perfectly with the pot that i that i have here um also something about this the price was not bad at all for three i mean you can't beat 14.99 and this is a part of their latest spring um 2022 collection so yeah, let's open it up and let's start to kind of maneuver with this gorgeous um, pothos variety that I have here. Aren't these three shapes just super adorable, y'all? Um, I absolutely adore the trowel. Um, it looks like a little shovel. It's perfect if you wanna give some elevation and some height um, to whatever cascading plant that you would like to use it for. Today, we're gonna to be using this nice oval because it's gonna be perfect for the pothos to kind of leaf off and create almost something like you would see a rosemary garland, which I can't wait to have and to try it out today. And then this little cute petite circle. What, it's so cute. Um, I'd like to mention that this brass finish is just so perfect um, for my home that I'm going to be placing it in. I live in a 102 year old craftsman house in um, downtown Durham, North Carolina. Um, it is perfect to go with the aesthetic that we have inside and the nice nature that you'll see. Um, but also too, y'all, um, I am super excited to let this patina over time. So it is not going to be this um, nice and shiny brass. Actually, it's starting to already patina um, just for me holding it and it being in the packaging for so long. Um, which I love. For those of us that want to keep it the nice shiny brass, I'll tell you now, it's really not gonna happen. Um, if you want it to, however, keep it that nice shiny brass for a little bit longer, what I might recommend to do is not using your um, bare hands to um, touch the material. This is gonna oxidize it, so um, make sure to use gloves whenever you're planting. And also you might not mist because the water is going to start that process as well too. So that's an option if you wanna do it right now. I'm just gonna let it go I think it's gonna look gorgeous um, also I'd like to mention y'all it is something that I am going to be wrapping the plants around these over time but you can just have this sitting in whatever container if it's a calathea where you want to have a pop of shine um, do it just place it out it does not have to be wrapped I just love the unique shapes that we have here okay let's start I'm gonna be saving these two for later and I'm gonna be focusing on this nice old one that I'm gonna be working with here today um, to be honest with you I am not too sure if I love this pot um, so until I know that I love the pot I'm not gonna plant it directly into the container so I have it just beautifully planted in its nice grow container um, with some nice fluffy um, potting soil uh, and it's gonna be perfect for now within this. And honestly, a lot of us like to keep our 
plants in their grow container just because we like to have that versatility um, for design but also effortless watering so i can just take this out of the container douse it with my watering can let it dry out and put it back into the container where we run into an issue y'all with that is having a grow container in a pot that does not have a drainage hole water will sit at the bottom if you're not careful so just make sure that you make that the water um, does not sit at the bottom so allowing it to dry out um, after you douse it with water let it, as soon as it stops dripping with water then placing it back into the container so with this devil's ivy, this is just going to be a very simple project. I'm not going to overthink it much um, when it comes to the placement. I'm just going to make sure when I place it into my lovely new plant that I'm not hitting on, on top of a stem or piercing any leaves. So I'm just going to gently place that in. And also too, what I like about these are that you can easily kind of bend out a little bit. So I'm going to bend out a little bit just to get a just so that I'm not piercing any type of roots. You see how it's just sitting just gently in there. Wouldn't that just be beautiful just to keep it like that, a little touch of brass, but we're gonna keep on going. So, I'm gonna take my first stem and I'm gonna let the stems be nice and bendy. I'm not gonna do it, it all tightly wound. Um, so, I'm gonna leave some room for some natural growth, natural movement, um, nothing too restrictive for the plant. So I'm taking the leaf, I'm making sure that this is nice and solidly planted in there, the actual trellis itself. And then I'm just gently kind of weaving the leaves. It's looking a little bit full, but that's to be expected. Um, with a plant that is already so vibrant. Now, as a lot of us do, you want to take a step back to see how it is all kind of coming together and making adjustments in real time. There's no um, wrong way to do this unless we were to just snap off all the leaves and do it too frantically, but I'm not worried about that. Just like I said, how you're wanting to make adjustments in real time. I think I'm gonna go for the, the shovel, the trowel one at this point. The reason why I'm thinking about that is we have such gorgeous, for this devil's ivy, such gorgeous plump leaves that I kind of want that to be seen. And right now it's kind of looking a little bit muddled because I believe the height. So let's make an adjustment in real time by just gently, kind of, and that's the leaf that I broke, of course. We're just gently kind of taking off the project, unraveling what was just easily just raveled there. You see how effortless that was? So I'm gonna take this off and use this for another project perhaps and see how this height is going to be. Again, just opening it up just a little bit more, making sure that I'm right around. Oh, look at that. That looks gorgeous just sitting there. Y'all, now let's start the weaving process. We're gonna think about taking the longest stems first. And again, we're thinking about the longest stems because those are the ones that can travel all the way up to the top. So I found a very long one right here. Let's take that and just gently kind of work our way with the leaves. And what do the leaves like tell us where to go? I'm not bending anything too far because I don't want the plant itself to break. Um, I'm making sure when I am kind of weaving this or gently around the brass structure that I'm also being cognizant to where um, we have some new leaves, um, tendrils coming out. So I don't want to cause any additional stress for the plant. And you got to remember, you don't have to put every single 
leaf up this pole. I kind of want it to be a natural cascade. Oh, there's my little pup, Archer. Let me know that a squirrel is around or maybe a neighborhood cat. I'm loving this so much more already. I don't know how it's looking from that side. I hope it's looking just as gorgeous as it is from the back, but godly, I'm just loving the look of this from the back. Let me show you. Right? Oh, and it looks great from the front too. So I think the higher option for such thick leaf plant is the right choice. And it's good that the, the kit came with so many options because we get to play around with multiples, right? I think we have a winner here, y'all. Look at this. Look at this. I am so happy in a project that took no more than a few minutes once we figured out the design can add some effortless style and add some height for your vining plants to go not only up, but beautifully entwined that will help them grow for many, many years to come. Now, this is something that I might have to transport um, into a larger container over time. Um, that might mean removing um, this um, lovely trellis. I have no problem with that. I'm thinking about how I am enjoying it now today and not thinking about many years time. Thank you so much today for joining with me. I'm um, in learning how to trellis a beautiful um, devil's ivy plant. Um, it's a cascading variety. And what's so great is that you see that pop of that brass still coming out, but it's kind of a unique shape that I'm digging right now. Uh, please like and subscribe so that you can receive more videos of the things that I love and excited to do, not only in indoor plants, but also outdoors as well. Um, you can find our channel at the Zen Succulent, but also look us up on social media. Um, we have a storefront that you can come and see some great plants live in person as well. So thanks so much for joining me today and getting your hands dirty. I'll see you in the next video.